John, just after the first quarter, and you've admitted yourself not good enough. Yeah, uh, obviously the first nine games were, were disappointing. We would have liked to have uh, a few more points on the board, but we assessed that, we evaluated it as a group, and um, we identified where we felt we could do better. And I think you've seen that in the last couple of weeks. Was there a wee lack of confidence in the dressing room? Well, listen, confidence is a big thing, regardless of what level you're at or, or what sport you're, you're playing. You know, um, confidence plays a big part. So. Winning games, uh, it's a great feeling and um, you know, the last couple of weeks obviously things have clicked into place. We look really solid defensively and we're creating chances and it's great that the goals are being spread throughout the team as well. Two things in this division, first is scoring the first goal and the second one is keeping a clean sheet. Vastly important. Yeah, definitely and again it's regardless of whatever level that you're, you're at, you know, defensively, um, you know, the, the teams that find themselves at the, the top of the table uh, more often than not have got a very good defensive record. You know, obviously you need to score goals to win games, but I think that solid foundation of being hard to beat um, and keeping clean sheets is is massive. And uh, yeah, we've had to move things around the last couple of weeks with kind of injuries and missing a number of bodies, but you know, everything just kind of clicked into place against these five and Scott Taggart going in the centre half, John Robertson dropping back into right back and Gaz Fleming playing a deeper role has, uh, has certainly suited us. We've changed the formation ever so slightly as well. Um, but that's been fantastic. The boys have been great, um, even though we weren't happy in the first quarter with regards to the, the points and the results. Um, you know, the training has never dropped. The standards is always really, really high. and. Um, I'm just delighted that they're getting the rewards now of what I feel they deserve because I see how hard they work during the week and, and, and now they're starting to get the, the points on the board which is great. Some might say a difficult start to the season. If you win on Saturday you could be up to third. Yeah, absolutely. I mean listen, we, we never panicked. Um, I think that was a great thing as well from you know my staff to the players, uh, even to the board, you know, um, we were all very, very calm during that time. I think a lot of people can get too carried away early on in the season, you know, and we always uh, maintained the fact as a group we felt we were good enough. And when we look at other squads on paper, we certainly have got great belief in the squad that we have here. We brought in a lot of new faces uh, in the summer. That sometimes takes time to gel. Guys are coming from, you know, from different clubs, different managers, different styles of football. It gets used, you know, it takes time sometimes to get used to uh, another manager's ideas and another manager's philosophy. So. I think now as well we're starting to see players coming back. You know, Craig Malcolm took a really bad injury up in the Dingwall during the the Betfred Cup, and it took him a few weeks to recover from that. He looks as if he's getting back to where we expect him to be, and um, we're starting to get another you know couple of boys back in, in training hopefully this week as well. So the, the squad will strengthen, but you know, really really pleased that we've we've put a couple of wins together. But I think it's also important to to keep our feet on the ground and not get carried away because. Um, you know, there's a reality check never too far around the corner, so we just need to realise what's got us the last couple of results and, and maintain those high standards this week. It's a crazy league. You know, you've got East Fife beating up Albion Rovers 5-4, then we take four off East Fife, then mm -hmm. Albion Rovers can then get beat 3-0. It's, it's a crazy league. It is. Um, it is. Every team is capable of beating each other. There's no doubt about that. You know, and um, I just think that consistency is plays a huge part um, and we've got enough experience I feel within the group that we should be uh, we should probably have five or six extra points on the board but you know I don't like to think too much about the past you know I think it's important that we just live in the in the here and now and um, even the great performance against Queen's Park we'll we'll discuss it tonight um, and we'll, we'll analyze it and you know take out of the game the positives and obviously there'll be negatives in there as well that we need to work on and do better but you know it's important regardless when lose or draw that you just put that game to bed and then you look towards the next one and, uh, and the next one is another difficult game against Airdrie who any time I've played them since I've been at the club it's always been a difficult game and we expect nothing nothing else for, for the same on Saturday. They're a young Airdrie side they've got a lot of experience missing through one thing or another but there'll still be a challenge here. Well they beat us at their place in the last game and I, I, I thought they beat us comfortably to be honest with you I thought they were far better than us on the day so uh, we know what they're capable of and we know that if we don't kind of maintain the standards that we've shown of late then it'll be a difficult afternoon but 
I stress that if we play to the levels that we're capable of, then we are capable of beating anybody in this league. And I think we're, we showed that early on against Wraith in the first game of the season, um, and even against Air United down there. You know, we probably should have saw that one out and took all three points in that game. So. We're a good side, we've got a good group of players and a group of players that I really believe in and I think if we can just maintain that level of consistency, um, you know, we'll be absolutely fine and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll climb the table, no doubt about it. Young PJ Cross has come in at a good time, he's, he's starting to, mm -hmm. to really put a good, good work ethic in the, in, the, in the team. Yeah, PJ's been a great addition and he's one that um, you know, I've been working on right from the summer. I mean, we played Celtic in a, in a pre-season friendly up at Lennoxtown uh, behind closed doors and the wee man was excellent on the day. I had been kind of pestering Chris McCart for a little while regarding that, but Celtic wanted to hold on to him and, and they weren't too sure of what their plans were for him at that time. Um, and then I made the phone call again a kind of a month later and, and all of a sudden PJ was available and uh, it was important that we got him in. He gives us a different dimension. He uh, gives us that you know bit of pace up top, I think that we have lacked in, in weeks gone by. He's very brave on the ball, he'll take the ball in tight areas. He's really, really positive and we try and encourage him that all the week, um, you know, every week, just to go out and be brave and take people on. And if he gives the ball away, then he knows he's not going to get a rollicking from me or from any of the staff. We just try and encourage him as best we can. And I think he's he's settling in now. You can see that in the last couple of weeks with two goals in two games as well, which is important for any striker. But there's more to his game than just the goals, you know, and I think you can see that, you know, in, in the big pitch there at Queen's Park, uh, at Hamden last week, he he seemed to really enjoy his football, and I think he's um, he's going to be a big player for us. Hopefully, we can get him tied up for longer in January. I mean, I think the second goal that we scored sums him up because at the end of the day, they had a they had a corner and we break away, and unselfishly he plays Craig Craig Malcolm in for a goal. You know, but ninety percent of the, the run was his run. Yeah, absolutely. And even in the even the first goal, you know, Kevin Colley does terrific to read. Uh, Anton Brady turning to his left and he nicks it off him but it's PJ's making that positive run beyond the, the back three of, of Queen's Park and you know I fancy him against most defenders in a one-on-one in -on -one race and you know he shows the great composure in that situation as well to go and slot it by the goalkeeper and you're right for the second goal he was terrific again but you know I'm a big believer in the run dictates the pass you know if you stand still as a player then you're only going to ever receive the ball to feet but PJ is telling Craig Malcolm for that second goal where he wants it just by his run you know Malky knows he wants the ball in front of him he wants to play down that channel PJ's got the pace to get away from him and he's got a great change of pace and a drop of the shoulder you see that and you know he, he kind of does the wee step over and takes him down the line and Malky's there six yards out and you know a terrific finish from him as well which I'm really really pleased with for Craig because he's had a difficult time since that injury up at Dingwall. Look at the injury list uh, is it looking better? Yeah, it is. I mean, um, yeah, Daryl Meg has took a, a bang to the head down at Strand Rar and on the medical grounds we were advised to, to leave him out um, for a week because he had kind of mild concussion. He came back into the squad, obviously for the trip to Hamden, but um, you know the lads had done that well against these five that I didn't uh, I didn't see the point in changing it. Frank McKeown, um, nursing a calf strain, he came back last Tuesday to try and train and they kind of went again, so that's another one that could be another fortnight probably. Um, Ryan Hogan is just going to join back in with the squad tonight, so hopefully he'll come through that unscathed. Thomas Grant is another one. You know, Thomas has had a virus, um, you know, had quite a serious uh, infection where he's been out for a couple of months and he's actually been away and from the club he's been away getting all kinds of checks. So we're trying to get to the bottom of that one uh, as well. So you know, we're, we're missing a number of players. Dougal McDonald, you know, potentially needing a, a hernia operation. Um, so we have been a little bit like the walking wounded um, in, in months gone by and I think you can see that as well with uh, how light the bench has been at times you know we've got a couple of empty spaces there on Saturday and, and the same against these five so you know we are where we are and I don't really try and make too big a deal about it to be honest with you because I know other managers throughout this league and every other league are uh, in similar situations you know that's why we try to build the kind of squad that we have up to now and we try and get that strength and depth where um, if you do get injuries and suspensions that you've got guys uh, on, the, on, the, on the lines waiting to come in and that aren't going to make too big a difference to the team. And obviously at home this week to Airdrie, it's a one you'll be looking to take forward and, and continue the run. 
Absolutely, you know, we just take it. I know it's a it's a horrible old cliche, but it's just one game at a time, you know, and um, nothing needs to change from what we're doing. And if the lads turn up like they have done the last couple of weeks, then we be absolutely fine, absolutely fine. We look really solid at the back. And as a unit, uh, collectively as a team, you know, I felt prior to these five game, I felt as if we were vulnerable when we were attacking. And we've changed the formation, we've changed the system. And now when we're attacking, we look a lot more solid and teams aren't breaking on us the way that they were. Um, and that's a credit to the players as well. You know, although we can work on it in training, it's up to them when they go out on a Saturday to, to carry out what we're talking about. And um, you know, we've got good experience there with Neil Parley and obviously Big Andy as well, who are trying to get my message across on a Saturday and they do that very well as well, Ian Flanagan as well. So um very fortunate that way that you know I've got really intelligent players and it doesn't take uh, you know it doesn't take too much repeating of the message that we're looking for. So if we can just maintain the standards that we've shown the last couple of weeks then you know the result should take care of itself on Saturday. A lot of people will say that Gary Fleming's best game was Saturday mm -hmm. and I probably agree with him because he broke that many moves up from Queen's Park mm -hmm. and he started that many moves throughout from us. Is that the role you see him playing in, in the hole between the, the, the back four and the, and the centre midfield? Yeah, well listen, I, when I brought Gary to the club, I played against Gary when I was at St Mirren uh, and he was at Dumbarton and you know every time we played against him he seemed to be playing in a different position. You know He can play as a number nine, he can play as a ten. I've played against him in the middle of the park in a deeper role and I've seen him play in the centre half as well if needed. So, you know, Gaz is one of them players, he's, he's a very intelligent footballer, he's very comfortable playing anywhere. And, um, and that's why I brought him to the club because he's very much a utility player and I knew if we were short somewhere then that he could go and fill in there. Um, so I'm delighted for him because I know he was getting a bit of a hard time and uh, one thing about Gaz, he, he always gives his all, you know, and I know I can rely on him. I know when he plays on a Saturday, he's not going to be pulling out tackles and he'll give us absolutely everything he's got in the tank. And um, not only that, but he's a quality footballer. You know, he really is. He's, he's brave on the ball. He'll take the ball in tight areas. He can see a pass and he's got a great range of passing as well. So um, now I'm really, really pleased for Gary. And, and again, he's one that's just, uh, you know, he's enjoyed the last couple of weeks and he'll take great confidence from that as well. And the game just informed me that he's on a hard track this week. I know, brilliant then, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and listen, these were, you know, whether it's coincidence or what, I don't know, but, you know, we sit down at the end of every quarter and we analyse, like I said, where we've been and where we need to get to. And I think we'd scored 10 goals in the opening nine games. You know, we've scored eight in the last two. Now, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. We need to score more goals, but for whatever reason, you know, Andy's got a couple, PJ's got a couple, Malky's got one, um, and you know, I, th I think as well, that the special mention must go to Ian Flanagan as well, and I, I touched on it after the game in the press, the quality of the delivery that he puts in is incredible, it really is, and you can watch any kind of football you want on the telly, you know, you see these guys at the top level and they're hitting the first man and, you know, the ball's getting clear dead easy, you know, Flanny never very, very rarely lets you down, to be honest with you. And that's a great asset for us to have in the team. His goal here for the free kick uh, against these five a couple of weeks ago was, was fantastic. And then he puts in two brilliant deliveries for two goals at Hamden. So Flanny's right up there. He's one of the best players in the league. There's no doubt about that. And uh, it's important now that we just uh, manage him properly and make sure he stays fit.